this box is the future of model aviation. Okay, I'm just kidding. So a while ago, a friend of mine, Dale Stratton, sent me a package with a plane in it with a simple request. Make, put rockets on it and fly it till it is no more. So we're gonna honor his request before that. We should probably assemble the plane. Hey Sam, you see my super glue anywhere? Hey, you got a bottle of glue? No, I'm busy. Stop playing that game. But it's Raid Shadow Legends, and they're sponsoring today's video. Oh, okay. Raid is an awesome new strategy game. And the best part is it's totally free. There are a ton of cool champions you can unlock, and the graphics are amazing. Wow, this is super realistic. Make your way through the campaign, collecting hundreds of champions, leveling your armor, defeat bosses, and win PvP battles. And there's even a dragon you can kill. So with over 10 million players and an almost perfect score on the Play Store, download Raid now. Download Raid Shadow Legends now and join our clan, Bad Dogs, and get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of a new player program. Download Raid today! What are you waiting for? Help support my channel and start playing Raid for free today. Now that we got some super glue, it's time to put this thing together. So we're gonna take all these parts out of the box. I'm gonna trial flip them together. Starting with the base of the wing root slash fuselage, we begin seeing everything together. Some piano wires used for the elevon control hinges. We pop some servos in this thing, wire up the motors, and we're all set to go fly. Before we destroy this plane with the power of rocket motors, we figured we'd get a baseline speed test with the stock electric setups. After a few passes, we got around 75 miles an hour with the stock setup, which is pretty impressive for the 3D printed airplane. With that out of the way, it's time to climb the ladder of rocket performance. Before we go to the really extreme rockets, it's better to start with this baseline rocket motor. We're going to use a C6, which is a very average low power rocket motor. That's strong enough. Give me a bigger servo. So here's the plan. This is the first rocket launch. We got the C65 engine. When it's ready, I'm gonna kick this switch because Sam's gonna be busy flying the other drone. Is that where you want it? A little bit higher. Gotta hit the switch. And go. There we go. Here we come. Down the middle and I was on the throttle, I was on the rock switch, I forgot which one was on. All right, that was a success. The first rocket boost. Oh boy, let's see what her speed is. Well, that was a waste of time. This dumb speed, speed logger didn't catch it, so. C65, kind of unknown. 
It didn't really look like it went very fast at all anyways. So that was not all that impressive. It hardly had any thrust as the plane has a lot of mass and the burn time for the rocket motor is so short that there really wasn't a whole lot of acceleration. It's time to give it the D. Okay, we can fix it, we can fix it. All right, it's just a little bit of glue. It's just a little bit of glue. Just a little bit of glue. I think we'll be okay. But did we get the speed? 52 miles an hour. That's slower than with the propeller. But it looks cool. This engine is quite a bit bigger and there was a noticeable improvement with acceleration, but our GPS meter ultimately didn't really work very good. The problem with this is when these motors fire off, they're usually dumping all their acceleration very quickly within one to two seconds. And the time for the GPS is like pick up a signal here and pick up a signal here can vary greatly. So ultimately it does miss out on that really fast boost of acceleration. So most of these readings you're gonna see in this video are probably around 55 to 60 miles an hour. It didn't really go faster than that, except for the electric setup, which had a long sustained run, which it could fully get that from this point to this point and then calculate the speed. Yeah, that's probably the last launch of the day. So we'll glue this and we'll come back tomorrow because that was pilot error that broke it, not, not the airplane itself. All right, we're doing it, we're doing it. Here it comes. Here okay, comes. that's good. So it survived that. Moving on to the E motor, it had roughly around the same amount of average thrust as the D motor. The D motor definitely had more thrust for a short amount of period of time, but the E motor burned a lot longer with the slower acceleration. All right, time for the F. With the smaller motors out of the way, it's time to move on to some mid-power motors. Now this is an F rocket motor. I've never really used these very often, except for that one time at flight test where it blew up. Whoa! These have almost double the amount of, what's the thing again, Sam? Average thrust. Yeah, this is double the average thrust of this E12 motor because this is an F27. So this is a lot more powerful of an engine. Before we actually put this on the airplane and go to the field, I got one more little thing. The E-class motor stop at about 40 newton seconds and the F-class can go up to 80 newton seconds. Now that's a lot of range in between the two and I was actually a little bit cautious of what these motors are gonna do, so I picked an F27 which isn't the highest number available in the F power class because you know I'm, I'm concerned about these things flying away and stuff because we don't know what this plane's gonna do yet and this is a lot of power. So let's put it on the plane. All right, this is for all the marvels. It's either gonna thrust off majestically into the sunset or explode from the overspeeding. We are at altitude. Everyone's good? All right, hit it. It's so unstable, it's so unstable. It's so yeah, unstable. Oh, I forgot the engine's really heavy. Hang on. Oh, I forgot to rebalance the airplane. <laughs> well, that was really stupid. When you make changes to an airplane, like putting a bigger motor on it, you upset the center of gravity, which is very important to the airplane's flight performance and the way it can handle. A nose heavy airplane flies poorly. A tail heavy airplane doesn't really fly at all. Or it flies once until it crashes. Try to level up the very last second. Uh, I don't think we could save this. <laughs> you might have to reprint the no section. <laughs> Since this plane is 3D printed, Dale did release the design files for this uh, Northern Pike RC airplane online, and that really allows me to reprint any part of the airplane I want at any time. We got some Chick-fil-A barbecue sauce to make up for my complete lack of pre-flight checklisting, which is adjusting for CG. And this time, we checked the CG out very well. I used 
bolts, five bolts in the nose, and also three packs of Chick-fil-A barbecue sauce to get the CG in the right spot. Is that a good idea? Oh, foreshadowing says this is probably a great idea. No, it's not a good idea. Okay, let's try this again. One last time, because I'm pretty sure this airplane's not gonna handle much more abuse than this. It's starting to break at the seams. Hopefully the rocket breaks it for us. <laughs> All right, ready? Don't hit me. All right, release it, Chad. Three. All right, yeah. And I got enough energy to bring this thing around. I don't think so. Too nose heavy. All right, we're out in the field. Now that was some speed. But unfortunately, the plane is actually still together. We did notice some wing flex right when I fired the rocket motor. Now this thing's actually putting a lot of thrust and with the raised center line of the engine, it does push the nose down just a little bit, but it was very easy to compensate with some up elevator. So we just pulled up, glided around, laid it out in the field and the plane is still together. So, I guess we only have one thing to do. Put a G motor on it. This is a G74 9W, but this is almost three times the average thrust of this F27 motor. So this is gonna be a lot faster. I'm going, you ready? Yeah. All right, launching. A delay I hit the switch I was like oh nothing's happening so I was like all right establishing a glide and then shoom it throws the airplane right to the crowd oh uh, let's go inspect the crash site because there's nothing left and hopefully there's no fire I think that's where the engine landed the NJSB in crash investigation has determined that the uh, the propulsion unit was uh, definitely a cause of this failure the pilot was not tuned into the, what was happening because of the terrible rocket engine and the plane exploded because of that. Oh, there's barbecue sauce everywhere. There's barbecue oh. sauce everywhere. Oh. I was like, what is this tacky stuff on the GPS meters? And it says 18 miles an hour. So that didn't work at all. Oh, don't eat the barbecue sauce. Man, why did they put sauce in there? I told you that was a bad idea. That was an awesome idea. Look at the light bar. It's so squished. All right, sauce this? boss. Oh no, the red cam. I don't know if the run cam got that. It's off. It's covered in barbecue sauce. This is a debris fuel. I hope it caught something. Let's go debrief back at the shop. That's a wrap. But anyways, I'd say that's mission accomplished, sort of. We didn't really quite get the plane to come apart, at least visually where I could see it was fluttering, but I have, I have a pretty good idea of if I were actually get the plane up in an angle, it would just completely come apart. There's no way. That was so much for us that pulling back on the elevator right when it saw it doing that, it just still went straight over and slammed into the ground. So ultimately, we kind of broke it. Although the airplane is a total write-off, I'm gonna blame that on the 2.7 second delay from the rocket motor because that was, that was just weird. There wasn't even smoke trail or anything when it fired. It just went bang. Completely quiet, no smoke, no nothing. And all of a sudden it just kicks on right when it was super unexpected. So anyways, I think that's gonna wrap this video up. Also, if you guys wanna print this plane, all the files are available for free right now on Thingiverse. Uh, Dale Stratton, or Local Fiend, he goes by that as his username, has put these things out for everyone to print. It would mean a lot to me if you guys could either download this plane or tip him because designing these things is kind of a lot of work. I've designed things in the past and the amount of time you've spent in this airplane to make a good experience for the average builder is kind of amazing and he's doing it for free. So if you guys could give him some support, show him some love, I really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video because we're gonna do this again later probably out in the desert i really had to limit my size with the motors and stuff what we did because i was worried about you know this plane flying away or whatever because it could be potentially dangerous so i'm gonna stop with that we're gonna go out to the desert for the next episode of this and really launch some airplanes
Hit the watch on the ground. Like. 